Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did an 18 by 24 inch canyon waterfall with gorgeous flowers, a ginormous mountain, and humongous trees. I know you're excited to paint this one. Check the description down below, find all the colors you need, make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on, let's do it just like this. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Paint with Josh, we're back in the studio and we've got a nice dry canvas. You can see I've already prepped it with our black Liquitex gesso, kind of created this little shape, used some old uh, acrylic fan brushes to make what we got and then what I'm gonna do is show you how to cover it and do everything in the middle of doing a live show so I think we got about one minute left until the live show starts I'll hit those cameras I'll clip everything together and then we'll just rock and roll like it never happened right love you guys And my brain. <laughs> Bob Ross, liquid clear, by the way. I'll put that up here. In your bed, you were dreaming, but you should have paint with him instead. Paint with John before you go, girls. He's not planning a home painting solo. I wrote and sang the lyrics to this song. Hey, we're Josh, before you go, go, cause he's not planning on painting solo. Before you go, go, I take me painting tonight. I think I can hit that high note. <coughs> Here we go, one more time. I want to paint that sky. It was, it was close. It was close. It was close. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's Saturday night. Saturday, Saturday. We're gonna need to make a uh, song for the, that Elton John song. Saturday night's all right for painting, if you ask me. Welcome everybody to the show. It's gonna be awesome. You guys are in luck because right now I'm filming a tutorial. So this painting will be on YouTube. You'll be able to rewatch it coming out next week or sometime in the near future <laughs> when I get the chance to do it. So. You guys gotta tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwiches? Let me know in the comments below, guys. And I'll show you exactly what we've done. Right over here, we took our Bob Ross Liquid Clear, made our entire black section wet. It's gotta be nice and wet and slick. Right? That way our paints will slide all over the place. Now, we'll come up here, we're gonna wipe off all this excess clear paint we don't need all that stuff right you put it on and no matter if you're bob ross or paint with josh or just barely starting out you're going to put on too much that's why we wipe off the excess now we're going to come back in here and grab our uh, bob ross liquid white which is a liquidy wet milky oh this jar there's like barely any left in this jar it's all like sunk to the bottom luckily for us i have a new one but that's probably just enough to do what we gotta do tonight. So, let's see if we can get some of that into the white area of our canvas. Now, I've gone and cleaned off my brush nice and dry, right? Mostly, it doesn't need to be perfectly dry, but we cleaned it off and now I'm gonna dab into my little lid, right? I'll we'll take our lid just like this. It's got that Bob Ross liquid white that we just put in there. You don't wanna have too much because we don't need a whole lot to cover up this space, right? There's only a small area that we need to cover and make it just as wet as the clear paint beneath it. All right, and that's the most vital part. If you don't do this part and you forget, you just try to do it on a dry canvas, oh boy, oh boy, you're not gonna be happy with it, let me tell you that. So we rub it in, we scrub it into all of these parts of our canvas, even the sides, because this is a big old thick Pro Series canvas. You guys know the big, thick, expensive ones, and uh, I like to cover the edges of my canvas. So, watch as we go across that that um, <coughs> black gesso that we put on already, right? It just kind of dulls it down, pushes it a little further off in the distance. How much white do you want to cover over your trees? How far away do you want to play them? It's a real cool little game we can play with this gesso stuff. Just letting it do it on its own. We don't really have to do much. Thank you for the gifts over there on TikTok. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. All right, now let's go over here, wash off this old brush, come back, and then, just like that, 
Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you, all of yous. Right now we've got a dry, a, a wet canvas across our whole smash, okay? The top is wet on all different uh, places. It's about the same amount of wetness across the whole thing. The bottom is all wet. And now let's get into a blue sky. Oh, I've wanted to paint a blue sky since I've come back. Just a pretty blue sky. So we're gonna take our Prussian blue and just getting the corner of the bristles into the brush and then pulling them down like that, right? Not the whole brush into the thick stuff, just pulling it down. And that way we can have this gorgeous little evenly spread bit of paint. We'll start bringing it down. Now, because we have our Bob Ross liquid white onto the canvas, it's gonna allow our thick paints to blend so much easier and drag down across all this stuff. It's just fantastic. And that's why I said 100% vital to the technique. If you don't have this stuff, boy, oh boy, you're gonna be well, in Agony City, like Bob always used to say, you'll be in Agony City because it doesn't blend and go away on a dry canvas, okay? So all we're doing, dragging in our paint, we're gonna let it get lighter and lighter and lighter as it gets down here. We don't need to push so hard, just kind of letting the brush flick it. Just very lightly grazing it and grazing it and grazing it so we don't get too much of our color into one spot. You can even see all those brush lines and bristles because this brush is so beat to death. We don't need it to be everywhere. We don't want it to over cover all of our black area. That's not what we're trying to do. Just trying to very lightly drop some of it in, leave a big old white section for some clouds. Why not, right? Now, you can see all these streaky poos up here. These, with this amount of paint on the brush, are only gonna grow and get bigger. So let's wash the brush off, and then we'll come back and start to blend out that sky all crazily like, right? Now we'll come over here, we'll go over there, here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> Dab off our brush so it's nice and clean. Now, I always say we're gonna start in our lightest area, and that's obviously this white spot, but then we're gonna go down into this light section before we go up into the darkness. And then we might have to go back and blend it two or three times in order to get it to look how we want it to look, right? All up to you guys. We're gonna come in here, Start blending it with some of that white that's on the, the canvas already. You can see how we're picking up the white on the brush. We come out and around on the edges, just the edges, kind of. And sometimes I was showing the classmates, my little classmates, my students, you can kind of blend it with little circles around the edges, just so you're not dragging too much of it into the center, right? That's all we need. Now, as we get out here, we're gonna start pushing harder on the brush, blending it more. The more we crisscross or figure eight those colors, and those little stripes will go away because we're blending them in, right? The girls know how to do it because they do the makeup all the time. Boys don't know how to blend, okay? We just don't. So guys, you got to do like figure eights or like crisscross it this way and crisscross it that way in order to make those little lines go away. And the softer we do it, right? Initially, it's hard pressure and then soft pressure. Guys, okay? Girls, you guys already know how to blend. You do it every morning, right? But the guys, we don't know. So we need our, we need our extra, <laughs> we need our extra instructions. Okay, the more I push on this paint, the further and further it's gonna drag across the side. Blending and blending and blending, getting softer because it's mixing, guys. That's what blending is, guys. Not talking to the girls, the girls already know. Guys, mixing together things, right? That's what blending is. So we're taking the white paint and mixing it with the blue paint and we're crisscrossing it so much that it's all going to mix together, right? Taking away all those little streaks. So we still have some up here. We can keep mixing and keep blending and keep doing and keep smushing and mushing and rocking. You can even go right over your white part, right? Right over there, it doesn't matter. It's gonna stay brighter than the excess of our sky, okay? Now, as we all know, we get a very light part down, a bright area down around the horizon. It gets darker and darker and darker as it goes up into our sky. So let's get a little bit more of our color, maybe a little bit of our black, our Bob Ross black, which is not the blackest black that you can get. And that's lucky for us. We don't need it to be too, too dark, right? We just want to drop on a little bit of that color. And then again, we need to go blend it out, but, or mix it together, guys, right? But we can't do it with so much paint on the brush that's gonna just keep spreading our darkness all around our whole canvas. So let's go wash it off. All right, flick it into a can, beat the devil out of it. Boom! That's 
probably the most fun bit about the whole thing. Cleaning the brush off. Seriously. Seriously. Don't forget, though. That knocking noise is just me bashing the brush on a paper towel on my table to get it nice and dry. Boom, boom, boom. Dry it up. Okay, now what did we do initially? We started in our light area. So let's go back to that light area where it's right there, right along the, the edge. Okay, and we start blending it and blending it, making it softer and softer. And the more that we pull on it, the longer streaks and the more the color will go. Or we can blend it the other way, crisscross. You notice how I'm missing that light area, not trying to get it too dark. Over here, over there, smushing it, work it around the edge a little bit. Over there, over here, bing, bang, boom, bam. Boom, all done like that, right? Nice and easy, folks. Easy peasy. I don't do hard scenes. I want you to, to do it with me and make it easy for you because then you're going to want to keep painting. And that's going to make it fun for everybody. Don't want to go into your dark area too much, so brighten that up. It's not a good deal. We want to keep it nice and dark so our shadows stay nice and dark. You can't have bright shadows. That doesn't make any sense. Now, there's so many ways you can go with this scene. Right? You can do winter, you can do fall, you can do summer, you can do spring, <laughs> you can do a different planet altogether and just have it be crazy, right? All up to you guys. But I'm just here to show you that you can do multiple things and look uh, and have a lot of fun. But first things first, that's not the right color. We need to find the right color. There we go. This box. Now, if we're going to do like a mountainous canyon waterfall scene, we're going to need a lot of plaque. In order to make up plaque, do you guys know those three colors that we mix to make up plaque? The paint with Josh plaque, the most ultra dark color you've ever seen in your life. Do you know the three color mix that we use to make that up? If you can tell me, type it in the comments. I really need to get some blue, like bad. Badly need to get some blue big time. What are those three colors that we mix up? In order to create paint with Josh plaque, you gotta let me know in the comments. Otherwise I'm not moving forward. I'm talking to you, specifically you. I'm not moving forward until you answer me what those three colors are. Now, over here, there we go, oh yeah, there. <laughs> That's my favorite thing Bob would say, there. Okay, we're gonna mix up our three favorite colors. Let's see who knows, anybody? Anybody, anybody? <laughs> Blue, black, and crimson, you guys are right. Every single one of you is, you're all right. All you, all you in my book. All right, we're going to come over here. We're going to grab that black, that crimson, and that blue. And we're going to mix it up into the most enormous mountainous scene you've ever seen. But Josh, what are you doing? We forgot the clouds. You're so right. Before we do that anymore, let's get up in here. This is paint with dyslexia. That's me. We're going to get up in here with some white onto our blue. And we're going to save that kind of light area that we've created, right? Maybe we would come down at it like this, at this weird angle, mushing on our paints, holding the brush like a caveman. Just blah, 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 blah. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger, blah, blah. right? Just whatever, don't hold it like this. What are you drawing with a pencil? Are you, are you penciling in clouds with the finest tip that you've ever seen? Or are you just making a giant mess of them up there? Because that's what I do. That's all I do. Make a big old mess of the clouds. Come back in here and just start mixing it up. And I usually go from right to left so you guys can watch the clouds come together and just have them explode into life. Look at those wicked things. Because we tried to make a mess, we weren't trying to be perfect with it, right? I had a lot of students in my classes where I would literally go grab the brush and I'd go hold it like this. And I'd walk away and I'd look behind me and they would go. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? I just said, hold it like this, you craziness. But that's fine. If you want your clouds to look a certain way, hold it however you want. Kept saying that as well. It's not a, not everyone's needs to be all the same or anything like that, right? Now you can do this scene without a mountain, in which case kind of skip forward the next maybe 12 minutes and we'll be done with the mountain section. Or you can add a mountain in there <coughs> nice and easily by mixing up that paint with Josh plaque. All right, we get in there with that plaque. We mix it all three colors up, and that way we can't tell which color is which. You can't see, you can't tell which one of them is there. And let's come in with just an enormous almighty mountain. You see what I did? 
This is what I did. I'm going to show you something that if you're not paying attention enough, uh, paying enough attention, I just give up. I give up already. I can't speak tonight. I don't know what it is. The last couple nights, I haven't been able to talk, and I don't know why. It's sort of my job to be able to uh, correctly enunciate and tell you exactly what we're doing and exactly how to do it, and I'm failing. <laughs> I'm failing at it. So this is something that I normally don't mention that we that you gotta know, right? It's, and it's about watching closely. So let's say we have all that paint. What I'm gonna do is scoop up a bit of it, flatten it out, and then scoop up a bit from that. And it becomes a much smaller little roll and say way up here in our clouds, we just have this enormous mountain. Boom! He's just out there to live forever. Bing, bang, boom, we slide him down. Maybe we come up over here and you're like, oh no, Josh, what happened to the treetop though? It's okay, we can always go back and put it in or we can make him disappear completely. It's all up to us. Now, let's grab our one inch brush, just like that. Take this guy, pull the paint out, slide it down. You see how far you can go and you can cut in front this guy? Or in our case, we wanna leave him way off in the distance in the back. But you can do whatever you want with these brush strokes. Right? How do you want your mountain to look? Maybe you want your little side right here. You got a little ridge. You just pull it down like that in this direction. Maybe come off of that guy, pulling him down in the other direction. Now you've got a little mountain starting to come together. Maybe these guys are very vertical because if you just pulled it over here, it would look weird. Right? So maybe that guy's a very vertical little streak straight down. Just a cliff coming down like that. Right, All up to us what we want it to look like. Remember, this guy's coming over here. Maybe that guy starts rolling off in the other side, falling off in that direction. Boom, 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 boom. You got these whole little things just starting to live and grow wherever we put them. There's a whole nother ridge right there, right? What happened if this guy came down and hit and started to fly across, cut in front of this whole thing, blend them together until they look right, right? Boom, boom, boom. We're starting to build this enormous mountainous mass. And I like to have it be a little bit more crazy and peaky and weird looking, right? I don't like it to be such a straight thing that you can just tell. Yeah, I just don't like that. There we go. That's much better. But again, we're going to have to blend these guys same as we did before. So we're going to pull them down, pull them down, pull them down, pull them down, pull them down. Don't have to touch every single bit of every mountain. Now you got your guy coming in that way, got your ridge going out that way. Whole little things are starting to happen over here, guys. All right, take this thing. Maybe there's a whole bit of mountain that feeds down off the back side of it and it starts pulling back over here and blending it and blending it and blending it until it's just very 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 light colored down there right poof we just stuck a mountain 10 miles off in the distance super easily like that right come over here grab a little bit of our white a little touch of our prussian blue just a little bit and let's mix that guy up over here and we'll create these gorgeous snowy shadows now if you don't have enough blue it's not gonna be blue enough. Right? It won't be dark enough blue. And remember, scrape all the way down to the bottom to get that bit of white. Now, what are we all gonna go do right after this stream? We're all gonna go check out the Glitter Wix show. She does an awesome candle pouring show that you all need to be there and watch. Take a little of our darkness, put it right into that blue. Mix it all up so you get all those crazy colors, right? Bam, that's a little bit too much right there. Mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it until you can't see much of too much of anything. Bang, just like so, okay? Now, we're gonna come into here and we're gonna decide maybe all of our light was casting down upon our mountains this way, in which case our bluey little shadow bits are gonna slide down very lightly. We'll have this bit of snowiness back in here. Maybe some of these little peaks, maybe off the backside, they might catch a little snow. Maybe drop down, maybe a piece will be light and a piece will be dark, who knows? Maybe grab it up here and just whip it down. Very light little pressure. And you can see it's not a super bright blue. It kind of stands very close to what the mountain color is. And that way it's not overpoweringly bright. All right, come up here where our little ridges were. Pop, 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 throw some of our blue off down the side is all we really need, guys. It's literally it, a couple little shadows in there light up the rest with white and what are we not going to do cover up all of that dark color right there needs to be places in there that have that darkness and if you do end up covering them you can go back in and add more but it's not always the easiest thing to do to add those dark shadowy bits so try not to cover them all it's a lot easier thing do too many and it's going to look weird right so 
Let's come back. We're going to grab our white, probably about double the amount that we had for our, at our first go. And one little bit of the blue that we had created, not our pure blue, otherwise that's going to make it our shadow color. All right, we use that blue that we created, which is already a super thin down bit of bright, bright, bright blue. Now when we mix it with white, it'll be even brighter and stand as the snow for our shadowy highlights back there, All right? So pull down a little bit of our snow, get it up onto our knife, come up here, straight down like a waterfall, just however you want it to look. Man, they can start looking really neat. I never like them to be perfectly straight or have too many little things that are exactly the same. So leave some dark areas, leave some streaks where there's not a whole, you know, overly saturated bit of brightness in there. That's not what you want to do. Drag them down, little things, right? Sometimes the straight lines aren't the most prettiest looking. So add a bit of brightness up there. Maybe a little touch on our guy back in here. It started to fade down into nothing. Grab up this guy, light him up off the side. Boom, boom, boom. How far do you want it to go? Totally up to you. We get to decide. Doesn't have to be the most straightest thing. Doesn't have to be the most crisp lines or anything because it's nature, man. That's why I chose to be a landscape artist versus, you know, a, a portrait artist or somebody who does pets. Like, that's too much perfection for me. I can't have it be so perfect. I gotta have some weirdness to my stuff you know what i mean so so can you you don't have to have it be the same thing that other people paint or whatever right as we get out there into that shadow make sure they're much more horizontal streaks across and i think right there guys we got a pretty cool looking mountain just if you ask me Ooh, little things little bits little differences so it's not just the straightest line up to the tip top of our peak this cool little thing, right? They don't all have to be the same. Bam, little bits where the light's trying to reach over the edge. Very neat, very neat. Now, like I said, you can even come up along the backside and drop in some of those dark little spots, but don't add too many. It takes away from our bright blue. All right, now let's grab our two inch brush. Whoop, hang on one more time. That's better, throw it up like that. Come over here and just very lightly, and I'm talking about so, so lightly, like touching the side of a sleeping baby's face, just so soft. All right, come in there like that. Come over here. Maybe we're going to go straight up because we came straight down. All right, these guys, they were going over a little to the side. These guys, pretty vertical. You don't have to go all the way to the top. And now, look, we're on the other side, and we need to come at it from the other way. You can't just keep going up this way. If we came down with our knife, you need to go up with your knife. If we came down with your knife this way, you need to go up with your brush that way. All very, very, very gently. Bob always said, like, three hairs in some air. He wasn't kidding. Very, very small amount of paint is all you need, right? Now, we go from that very light touch to a very hard smashing. Now, over here, oh, pfft. I was just gonna say, over here, I'm gonna be careful because I don't wanna get too much white into my, that kinda looks like it might be a cool place for a waterfall. Ooh, guys. I'm like standing back there, just, guys, what are we doing? That, that, uh, that just, no, 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 no. But, in any case, don't get too much of your brightness down into your darkness. It'll be too hard to bring back, right? As we're tapping down, just like a little cloud and like our our, um, our downward angles with our knife, we're going down in the same way, not trying to make everything look the same and not having it on the same line, right? It's not just straight across at the bottom. It's gotta be all weird. Now this looks, it's like it's too bright right here. So I'm just gonna tap at it a couple times just to dull it down, that's a little bit better. I like that a little bit better. It's just too bright. Now watch, as we get around the point of the mountain, you see how my brush kind of turned angles, and now we're over here, and we're tapping down, we're getting some of that snowy blue, and we're turning it into misty fog. That's all we're doing. The more times we tap, the more mistiness it turns into. All around, now you got this floating mountain way off in the distance, especially when we mix these guys in. Where does the mountain stop? Where does the sky begin, right? Like what happened? We created all this gorgeous mist. Now, as we come in here, the more that we mist it up into that dark uh, area, the harder it's gonna be to crisscross over it. Doesn't it look like there's like beams of light just coming down, shining down through the trees behind these guys, all because we drug it down like that, right? Having those lights come down, so cool. Little things we can do. So tell me guys, where are you watching from? What's your favorite sandwiches? 
And this guy's coming together pretty neatly, if you, have, if you ask me. Now, luckily for you guys, Mac, the great Mac attack, came in and purchased this painting before it was even started. So, he's going to get a light party. Why don't we just do it right now? If you're sensitive to photo light flashiness, uh, turn your phone away for about 10 seconds because we're going to have a quick light party. There's going to be a lot of flashing lights. So, uh, turn away for about 10 seconds in about three, two, one. Light party! <laughs> Alright, we're going to turn it off. Boom! All the way back down. The lights are now back to normal. You can now turn your phone back around and check it out. That'll be the part that I cut out of the video since I'm now filming a tutorial for this video. So, congratulations, Mac. Hey, baby. I'm gonna get my... Oh, there we go. All right. Mac is the man. He's gonna get a free spin on the spinny winny wheel by the time we come back. So, now we're gonna come in with a lot of our... Hang on, let me, let me break myself. You know how you get those... Someone needs to buy me one of these. You know those directors, like, cut things where they... It's like a thing and they clip it shut. I need one of those when I film my videos, seriously. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna mix up a little bit more of our Paint With Josh plaque. If you don't have enough, or maybe you used up too much creating your mountains off in the distance. And I'm gonna run my brush right through all that color and pick it all up. I'm gonna try to create about 10,000 trees off in the distance in just about 20 seconds. Are you ready to go? We're gonna wiggle it down like this. As we wiggle down through the paint, it sort of spreads out the bristles, fills them more, and then you go attack the canvas with it, right? So you come over here, just pulling it down, wiggling, 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 letting it fill up. You don't need to fill up the entire brush, right? It's about halfway. This side's filled up even less, right? It doesn't have to be the same, and it doesn't have to be, excuse me. Ooh, had a quick burp. It doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't all have to be the same on either side either. Now we're gonna come back in here and start popping in these little far away little treesy bits. They can climb up as high as you want, but I don't suggest putting them up into the thick part of your snow. It just doesn't work as well as you would hope it would, right? Not all of them are the same height or the same shape. And the more that you do it, the more your brush flares out. So you gotta go back, get some more paint in there, come back in here, tap, 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 filling it all in. Now. We've completely gotten rid of that one tree on that one side. It's okay. It's okay. We could bring it back if we wanted to. We know he's there. You and I, we know he's there, right? Now we're gonna come back in with these guys with a little touch at the bottom and then taking it away at the top. We can kind of flatten them down, make them a little less bright, a little less thick in the texture, and just dab them down like this, right? You can see we're kind of touching and then pulling up and just letting it go up and up and up. And you can see how we've saved that bit of blue in between. We're gonna do the same thing now that we did with our mountains. We were going across and around and down. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We went up, now we go with that very hard smashies. Right? We don't wanna to get too much of our color down into the darkness. So don't dab down too far, but the more that we dab down on these trees, the more it's gonna make them look like they're further and further and further away. Mix up a little cloud at the base. All of a sudden, you've got a whole other bit of forest in between your mountain and your foreground right here, right? It's a little funky. Let's make that fog a little bit more foggy, right? Just by dabbing at it more and more and more and more and more and more and more, mixing up those little trunks and different things. Oh, that's better. I like that better, right? Now, we can always go back in and add in this tree in the front. We can fix this guy, but the one over here got lost, and I say... Let him get lost back there. He's fine. You don't have to show every single thing, right? Let's go back in here with that plaque. Load it back up onto our brush. And just by dropping on a little bit, we can fill in right where that tree was again. Boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden, he's now right into the foreground. And why is that? Because he's a darker shade than the trees are off in the distance. Same with this guy back here. We drop him in. Bang. All of a sudden, he now sits in front. Now we need to add a couple little rocks and such. These guys are hanging out on. Dude, that waterfall, guys, we could. Oh, we so could drop it off the side. I was gonna have it come down through here. No, yeah, I'm getting rid of it. We're getting rid of it. Cover that up. Just like that. 
a little rock projection around our tree over here, right? We can project this big old rock right back into where it was before. Boom, just by adding that bit of darkness in. Now those trees on top, I like them, uh, uh, kind of how foggy and shadowy they are like that, right? Taking some of our dark color, just filling it around the edge of our, our little horizon, I guess you would say. And that way, that stuff will kind of grow down and feed down into it. Remember, we want it to stay dark, so don't put too much color on there. But just like that, you get these cool little things to happen, guys. Now, let's get a little bit of, uh, we're going to need to lay down our river first, okay? So what we need to do is grab our brush and go into our Prussian blue just by itself. The Prussian blue is so deep and so dark that it'll remain dark. And let's just say we had a river that came out here. Maybe it fell down I like this already. Maybe it hit to the side, came over this way. And just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Bang, that whole little thing. And we can build off of that where you want it to go. But as long as we got some under color down here, we can add rocks, we can add trees, we can add grass, we can add all sorts of stuff. We just gotta figure it out and where everything's gonna stay, right? So that's our straight drop off right here. So we'll have some grass come down. Maybe it'll start to grow in over there. I can already see it, guys. I can see it in my brain. Now, once we've got our, our under colors sort of set out out here, and we've got our rocks all placed in where they need to go, right? We have our little horizon right back there. We get the river coming out. And our water, I got our land. Very cool. Very cool. And you start to piece it together, right? We know it's going to fall right there. Same as that guy did. Same as our water did. So create that. Play into it. Maybe a little bit of darkness comes off the back. We'll have this whole rocky thing. And if we wanted to, guess what? We could bring that tree right back to life that was sitting right there, right? And I think I want to. I, I just really think I want to. So let's wiggle into the paint. Wiggle down through there. Where did I have him? I think he was like right here. We'll drop this guy in. Bang. Sitting right on the edge right on the edge back in with the corner of our brush and we tap and tap and tap and tap a little bit harder as we go and the harder that you're smushing when you go down the fatter your branches will be imagine that imagine that they say right very lightly at the top with just the corner of the brush and the more we go down the more we smash it in bang bingo bango got cool little bits over there over here i like this guy Maybe we'll throw one thing, maybe right through the center. Who knows? I could drop a whole log into this painting too. Now let's go back and we'll grab our white. I'm running out, so I need to go back and get some more out of the old box. But we're gonna wiggle it down just the same. Little bit of paint, don't need a whole lot, which is why I always come over here and wiggle off the excess. You don't have to have all that extra stuff. Come back to our river, which when we touch it should instantly turn blue because we have that super dark blue undercolor under there, right? However we want it to look, it's a little bigger as it comes towards us. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, back into our white paint to load it up. We'll go over to the side, down, turn the brush over, over to the side, down, right? Don't need to have too many little bits as they go. And the more that you go over it, the softer they'll become and the further away they're gonna look. So how far away do you want it to be? A couple little wiggles as we go back into our, our water. A couple little bits, little wiggles, little here and there. Very sideways, though. They don't have to be, you know, you don't want it to go too straight or anything like that. We've got a little bit excess brightness. Now, as we came down, if that much water was coming down from a little hill, I would imagine it would have a few little splashy bits that are going to splash up off the bottom, right? So we get this little thing, comes down and smashes. And then just under that, why don't we light up a whole little area right over here. Maybe it got bigger, maybe it turned, started rolling back towards us just by getting bigger, right? All up to us. How do you want it to look? That's what it's all about, seriously. Seriously, seriously, right? You can have it roll out, you can have it roll around, you can put trees in, you can fall, you can do all sorts of stuff. All depends on what we want it to look like. Now, let's go in, knock off the paint, off of that brush just real quick, come into here, and very, very, very lightly start to drag out all that paint. It wants to go far. You can't let it. It's got to be so, so, so light in the touch. So, like so light that we're even, we haven't even connected the two bits, right? There's still that dark separator underneath, which is exactly what we need, which is that creates that shadow 
right underneath that fog above the water. You get that little shadowy area. Don't do too much with that, okay? Now, let's wash off this one-inch brush. We're gonna go into our green and our yellow and throw in some grassy bits, maybe back in here. Maybe we should do our rock face first. We can do lots. We can do lots of stuff. Okay, let's grab a little of our brown. All right, let's go into the brown. And why not? We'll use this little bit of white that's already in this pile right here. To mix it down, just marble it, right? You don't want to overdo it to where it's all the same. So every once in a while, pull it out flat and check and go, ooh, there's lots of cool little colors in there. Scoop that bit up. Let's say we had a little touch here and a little thing. We turn our knife and we come down this side and we let it roll into the shadowy area. Maybe there's a whole little cliff right around there. Maybe not. Maybe we drag it to the edge all up to what we want it to look like, right? Maybe this whole guy just coming down the side. All depends. How are you going to turn your knife? Turn it upside down, roll it over here, stretch it out. Have it rock down this whole little thing. Come back in there, mess it all up, turn it on the side, push it down, scrape it up, drop it down again. It's a rock. It's not supposed to be perfect, right? It's supposed to be weird and such. Pull it down over here. Maybe it slides down off the edge. You never know, but the more that you add on to it, the more you're not going to like it. Now that I can feel I've gotten away from my, my paint, you can even tell a difference, right? That paint that I brushed out with my fan brush versus the stuff that's out here that's just black canvas. It acts differently. Don't blame me if you go drop down too much paint on something that doesn't have some undercolor underneath it. Very, very, very sketchy when that happens. Now, what if we did, just for, just for a little thing, throw a little bit of rocky bit back behind this guy, just kind of tossing him off. Doesn't need to be a whole lot, but now he's got a little rock back behind him. Now we can go into that grass like I was talking about. We'll come over here and grab a little of our sap green and a little of our cad yellow, which is normally why I put them together on my palette. They're usually very close because we mix them as grass a lot. And say we came down with our vertical brush. Okay, I'm not like this, I'm not like this, right? Sometimes I have to dip down even to get to the right angle where you can come in and leave a little tiny line of grass. And it starts rolling down and rolling down, just like a little typewriter. Each one goes lower and lower and lower. And then you go back and you fill in little bits, not making it all the same. You fill it in just like that, a little patch of grass right out there on the end, right? Now I'm gonna use this as a bunch of flowery, beautiful little bits. So why don't we come back, roll the brush over, get real low again, and tap in our grass, just like a typewriter out here. Right? Just out there like that. And all of a sudden, you got this little meadow cutting right by our little waterfall or stream, whatever it is. Very cool. Now, you could, on this guy, you could turn your brush vertically and drop down bits of grass, right? Just tapping them in like little vertical typewriters as they fall down the edge. We could do the same over there, but I'm going to put in a lot of flowers over there. So we'll get our yellow back onto our sap green and let's say what if we came down like this and just cut in a new little hill right down there right right down to the water and the more that we tap it in the more it's going to look like this little gracious little thing out here doesn't need to be as bright all the way back you can light it up back here but just don't have it be so super bright for goodness sake boom at this little hill right out here in the night or the day whatever whatever time it is we're painting. And we can always go back and brighten it up, extend it, bring it down to its, down to the water, right? Whatever we want to do, you could do the same thing off the other side, literally, right? If those little things are going to have a bunch of flowers, we could dab in a whole other thing of grass, leaving a dark line in between the grass and the water. It's our little dark separator. Gotta have it. What if we had our, our little hill come down like this? Right, coming down, coming down, changing the angles, ending up at that same little spot. Makes our hill look more rounded. Go back and soften that first guy down because he had a bit too much paint on the brush. Soften him, soften him, soften him. You get these cool little things rolling through the night. All right, we've left ourselves room for one big tree on this side. You could literally drop a tree branch over the, you know, the river, like a little bridge. So many things we could do. And we still got 22 minutes, guys. So. <laughs> Try that again. Hey, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And I 
Let's dab that guy up just a little touch. Mac, what are you thinking of this one so far? Did you think it was gonna be as beautiful as it is? And what are we gonna call this painting is the question. It's oil paints, Richards. Oil paints, oil paints. Big thick ones like Bob Ross. Marvelous, he says. It's marvelous. Okay, let's come back in and let's go highlight these trees over here, right? So let's grab a little bit of our liquid white, just a little touch. We go into our little grassy color, that green and yellowy color with our liquid white. It's gonna really make it bright. And you have to have the right ratio of the liquid white versus the titanium white because it will not stick or it'll be too goopy otherwise, right? You don't want it to be either. You want it to be just in the middle. Okay, we'll come over here and just with the little corner of a tap of a brush, we're gonna go down, skipping little things, back and forth, back and forth, then working ourselves towards the darker shadowy side and just stopping, just like that. Bang! Gotta have all those little spaces in there. If you don't have all those little spaces, you're gonna be in trouble, right? The more that you tap in, the more that you're not gonna like. So don't overdo it. Make sure to have your bright areas and your dark areas. Bang, just like that. Woo, baby! That's a cool little tree right there. That is a cool tree. Now, mind you, they don't have to have as many details as you would think because they're real far away. Those guys are so far away. Come back in with that little brown pile that we had created. I know you didn't use it all. And let's come off the front side of our tree just by kind of tapping and releasing. And you don't have to go all the way to the tip top. You don't have to. Just get a little bit of chunky bark on there is all we really need. And now if we can just throw some branches off of that guy, we'll be all set and done. Right? In which case, grab our odorless mineral spirits into our plaque mixture. We'll grab that plaque mix on this real long Paint With Bram liner brush and just throw off the most gorgeousest of all branches that you can even possibly think. Maybe you make your tree trunk a lot taller right through that mountain just by dragging it off, pulling them off in different directions, little things out here, over there, little flick, however you want them to be, man. That's how they're gonna be. Maybe we take this guy and extend him down to streaking down. We're going streaking up through this guy, bend it around, get all these cool little bits out there in those branches. And you can sit and add a million, but remember that guy's far away. We don't need too many details back there. Okay, what we're gonna need is some big old monster details right up here in the front. Now, what I'm gonna do is, if you have any of this Meaden Lamp Black, I haven't used it in a while because they're running short. I've only got that much left. But Meaden Lamp Black, this'll turn any paint or will keep any paint super dark. And I'm talking about it'll stay black even over all this brown, all that white, whatever, it'll stay super black. So I only put a tiny little dime size, little pea size dollop onto my palette. You can see how it's literally the size of a pea. Literally, a little green pea, like eat your peas. It's, it's that size, right? I'm gonna come over there and, oh no, we don't have enough of our plaque mix mixed up. Hang on. We gotta mix up some more plaque, guys. What are those three colors that we normally mix in order to create Paint With Josh plaque? You gotta tell me, because we're about to drop some big old monster tree branches into this thing, and we need a lot of it. So what are those three colors? And as you guys are telling me that, I'm gonna take those two little corner folds of lamp black that I got, and I'm gonna mix that into this paint. All it's gonna do is thin it down just a little bit and keep it super dark. So, when we come in like this, just do it, Josh, just do it. Right down through the mountain, through everything, it stays uber dark, right? This guy, what if we had a little line and came over like this? Bang, right down into the bit. Oh, I love him, love it. Nice and thick right down here, looking excellent. We'll add tons of little branches off of him. And then let's get one more big bit of a tree right down here, maybe sitting on this little hill. We'll come right down like that, through all the paint, right down into the grass, come off of this guy with little corner taps, 
and the more we go, the more you push in. Now, being such a big tree, we tend to start pushing in very quickly on a tree this large when you get to, uh, away from that top. And then you can start bouncing side to side. All our goal is, is to cover up whatever is behind it with a bit of darkness, right? Our whole chunky tree has now come and sat way down here, covering up everything else behind it. We know it's back there, right? We painted it, we know all the stuff that's back there, but if you don't put that tree in front of a lot of stuff, it does not help you when you go for your, your distance and depth, right? Very cool. Let's take the last bit of that paint, go into our round brush. I'm so excited for Paint With Josh brushes, you guys. It's not even funny. I literally, I'm checking the mail every day. I'm hoping they'll be here maybe Monday or Tuesday of next week. Hopefully. <laughs> but I'll have one that looks just like this. We'll take that round brush and pop it right into here. And skadoosh! You all got all these gorgeous little bushy things growing right out of this guy, right along the edge of a river. The edge of the river! <laughs> oh, Mac, what do you think? You like this one? I like it. like it. The trees. I kind of am pissed at myself that I cut off that little projection in the rock. I really like that projection. But again, I know it's back there. So, well, I should have missed him a little bit. But then I was going to hit the tree and the tree's perfect. So, I mean, what do you, what do you do? You got to cover up something. You got to cover something. Down... <laughs> The van down by the river! <laughs> ah, it's funny. All right, let's get some brushes clean, guys. You gotta tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwiches? And remember, in just about 14 minutes, we're all gonna go over to check the London's Glitterwick stream. She's always doing something fantastic over there. So, we're gonna go check her out. And you can watch either on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, I think. Maybe not YouTube, but I know the other two, at least the other two. So, get some brushes cleaned off. You'll tell me where you're watching from. Then we'll throw some branches and some bark on that tree, put some highlights on this big monster on the left, and we'll be all set. Be all set, baby. I'm gonna catch my breath from friggin' talking for a straight hour. You know how hard it is? Hard it is to talk a straight hour. And be interesting. Not just talk, but be interesting. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, Irish Spring. I like that. I like you guys' uh, name suggestions over here. Oh, you know what we need to do with all the rest of that plaque is make our bushes, guys. So let's mix up just a little bit more of that plaque color because we didn't make the bushes. I mean, we didn't have enough anyway, but Josh never makes up enough to begin with, so it's fine. We'll come over here, and in that black area, we need to add our big old chunky bushes. So we'll pop them up above our grass and then almost right down on top of the water, and there may be only room for about two. Pop, 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 bang. We'll have all these flowery bits. A bunch of flowery bits up here. <sighs> you could even pop one right here too. Boop. A little flowery bush living right out there on the edge, right? We get to decide. Nobody gets to tell us what it looks like besides us. That's it. Don't let nobody tell you it should look like that. I hate that word. The only time that should should be used is I should win the lottery. That should be the only time should should be used. And someone says you should have done it. It should look like this. Oh, I can't stand that. You go do it like that then, bro. If you're so good, you go do it like that. You do it like that then. Wash all these brushes off. Paint with Josh. Black is a dark color, guys. All right, what are we thinking about this one so far? You should do it how you want. That's right, Rizzler. You should do it exactly how you want to do it. 
Remember guys, we only got about 12 minutes left. Highlight all this stuff. Can it be done? I think so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we could do it, guys. I'm pretty sure it's possible. Not unless I start right now. Okay, let's come in here with our brown. And why not we'll throw a trunk in this guy right here, right? A little bit of brown, a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown. Right down to brown town. Come over here. And a little touch off of our tree, leaving a little bit of darkness, especially around our mountains, right? If it's the same dang color as the mountain is, it's not going to stand out as being tree bark unless you leave that dark line. Leave a dark line in between and you'll be happy. Come off of this guy, a couple little taps, little tap, 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 all the way up. Doesn't have to be exact, doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to go all the way to the top. It's gonna get very skinny up there. All right, now these guys, depending on how much, you kind of give them a little pull. Boom, boom, boom. You can cover over your almost your whole tree and make that little bark stand out. So fantastic. Now, let's come in with a bit of odorless mineral spirits onto our brush and into our pile of plaque, which is gonna make it very runny and very wet. Okay, we'll come over here, we'll take our brush, and let's say just off the top of this guy, right through all of that stinking brightness from our mountain, just gorgeous, gorgeous, make the skinniest little tree branches you've ever done did seen out here with this Paint With Brand brush. I'm telling you, it is a brush of all brushes. <laughs> until the Paint With Josh brush comes out. And then, I don't know what Bram's gonna have to do, but he will have a smaller line of brush than I. Over there, over here, a couple little bits, maybe we crisscross, that guy goes up, that guy goes off of there. Little branchy things that we can hide in the daytime, cut in front of that tree, dig it. Dig a channel right through all that paint, spinning the brush as we go through. Helps cut through all that thick paint. Bang, another little channel has been dug. We dig a channel all the way to China. Bang, did you ever think when you were a kid, you're like, oh, if I dig down this hole deep enough, I'll get to China. Don't lie, everybody did. Everybody did, you can't fib on me, right? Throw some branches off of this guy, over off of that guy, stringing them through, over here, over there, straight up through the tip top. We got the smallest little branches. Yeah, ever done did seen. Some of them even hang off the top and droop down because they're so tall, it's an anomaly. It's an anomaly, you guys. Just an anomaly what's going on up here. There we go. Much better. I like it, dudes. All right, let's throw some highlights on those bushes and then we'll be all set to go. Now, if I was gonna add a bunch of colors, I have just about a bunch here. Why don't we go in? We only have four bushes really that we need to highlight. So let's get a bit of our red on the one side of the brush, right? The top side, get a bit of the yellow on the bottom side of the brush, just going right into the pile, pulling from the, the tip, just like I told you not to do in the beginning, right? Now we've got a little Simon. <laughs> we need some green and some blue on the other side. I think those are the colors. And we'll come over here, we'll start tip tapping it and chip tapping just with the yellow, maybe flip the brush over Tap in some of those little red bits. Flip it over again. Can we get any more yellow? Can we get any more red to dump on? We don't want to have too much, right? So let's go wash the brush off. Get all that thick chunkiness off of there. Back into the thing. Like that. Put our lid back on the bucket. Okay, let's decide maybe we can get... What if we add a bit of crimson and a bit of this... Indian yellow together. So we got our crimson and our yellow. Let's see what that looks like when we, ooh, we brighten it up. Just a touch, a little bit of white. Come back here. Oh, it's like a thingy. Need some more white though. Gotta have some more white in here. Brighten this sucker up. A little soft little orangey color back in there. Very cool. Wash our brush off for the last time. Now, for this guy that's up in the front, I'm gonna switch and put some liquid white in there. Because the liquid white is going to help it come off the brush easier. And give it a few more details than we do back there, right? Back there, it's just kind of a mush on top of a mush. And that way you get that deep darkness and all those little colors. But up here, we're going to add a little touch of our liquid white. 
right? And I'm gonna go into some blue flowers, guys. Liquid white into this little bluey bit and drop in some blue down in here. Just a couple little bits, bang. Very soft little thing, okay? And then I'm gonna see if I can get some of my white to attach on to that. A little touch of my liquid white and a little tiny touch of my titanium white. See if I can't brighten it up. Yes, right here. That's what I wanted to see. A couple little blue bits into some darker blue, not trying to cover up all of our little shadowy places, right? Very cool, guys. I like that. One more brush to, one more little bush to go. One more bushy bit to go. All right. That guy, this guy. What are we gonna put off of this mess over here? Let's do some green. I was thinking green and yellow, guys. The green and yellow is classic. You can't go wrong with it. Bang, just a little greenery bush out there. And if we can get just a few of these thick, super thick yellow kind of flowery bits to hang off of them, pow, that's how you do that. Now, last tree, and then what are we all gonna go do? We're gonna go check out Glitterwix as she pours the most amazing candles you've ever seen. And if you've never seen one of her shows, you are missing out on life. All right, so you got to get over there. Right after this show ends, she starts up her stream. So we got about five to ten minutes. I think she has like a five-minute intro thing set up. It's so about five to ten minutes. And then we're going to be all finished. So you guys start coming up with a name. All right, come up with a name for this painting. What are you going to call it? And I'm going to do this last little tree. Call it all good. Go over here, a little of our liquid white, because you gotta have it, and that way it attaches itself onto our tree easier than if you didn't have it. You'd be pushing onto the tree with the green, and all it would be doing would be turning your brush black, right? So a little of our green, a little of our liquid white, a little of that yellow as well, just to brighten it up. And sometimes you come in here and you start tapping down, right? We get to decide what we want it to look like, so play with it until you like it, all right? Little taps, you gotta go back and reload your brush every so often. And these guys, as they come down, you can smack a little bit harder. Even little things as they come out the brush end, little bits like that, right? Go back, soften them down just a little touch. Into our darker side. And just like that, guys, you got a pretty cool little tree. A couple little dark pieces in there, a couple little bits of brightness, right? Little things that we all know and love. Just fabulous. The more that we tap at them, the darker and darker they go. So you kind of decide what you want it to look like, where you want your bright areas to be, where you want your darkness to be, and all of a sudden you're gonna have a really, really, really cool looking tree. Now, a lot of times you can't get it done on just one brush load, right? You gotta go back, you gotta load your brush up again, and then you gotta go back at your dark areas where you might have hit one or two many times, right? Go back over here, load the brush up again, a little bit of the yellow in there too. Don't wanna have too much liquid white in the brush. That's how you get those white spots on the end of your branches. All right, so come back in here, start tapping in little things. Doesn't have to be the most brightest bit, but we want it to stand out from our darker bits. Tapping it in over here, over there, little bits. Not trying to cover up every spot. And the more that you tap, the more you're going to like it. Until you tap one too many times and you don't like it. And you're like, oh, I wish I would have done that less. You know what I mean? Tap, tap, tap. A couple little bits in there. You can always fix things that you don't like. So don't worry about it. Tap, tap, tap. And if you can't, guess what? There's always one more canvas you can go back and practice on and do all sorts of different things on the next time that you paint, right? We all get more than one shot at it, that's for sure. Sometimes I mess up my trees, I'll be honest. Right? I'm painting with Josh, man. I'm freaking paint with Josh. And I mess up my trees sometimes, and I gotta go back, and I gotta fix them, I gotta try, and I gotta do this. And then I think to myself, as I'm thinking of, you know, 90 other things and what to say to you guys, think to myself, okay, maybe next time don't put so much liquid white in the brush. Or maybe next time try less taps, or this, or that. You gotta figure out what is the easiest way to do it, right? My way might not be the easiest way for you. Totally acceptable. Doesn't have to be the easiest way, or we don't have to both do it the exact same way, but 
maybe my way might be able to help you or at least give you an aha moment. And you're like, oh, that works for me right here. Throw in the little birds. Go caca as they fly through the sky. And what are we going to name this painting, Mac? And are you going to give away your free spinning wheel gift? Are you going to keep it? What are we doing with that? Because Mac bought the painting literally right before the show started, I was like, all right, I'll give him the spinny winny wheel. But normally you got to buy during the live show, any painting purchased during the live show, and you get a chance at the spinny winny wheel. Now, the wheel does not always giveth. Sometimes it taketh. A lot of times from me, it taketh and giveth to you guys. But every so often, it will land on the Paint With Josh wins, and there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, there I could roll you, I could spin you again, but... Really, I mean, I should stick to my own rules, you would think. If I don't stick to my own rules, who's going to stick to my rules for me? Man, that's so cool. I like this one, Mac. I really do. Ain't a dang thing I would change about it, honestly. So, let's see. Let me end the tutorial real quick, and then I'll do the Mac thing, and then we only got about two to five minutes. Okay. All right. Well, got <laughs> hang on. Let me do this real quickly. Well, guys, I can't wait to see your version of this tutorial. <sighs> One more time. Well, guys, I can't wait to see your version of this painting. It came out amazing. I... One more time. Man, this painting came out amazing. I can't wait to see your guys' version of it. Please send it into facebook.com slash. Damn it, I got a new Facebook link now. Hold on. One more time. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Man, this one came out amazing. I know, oh my God, I'm running out of time now. This is embarrassing. Here we go. Man, this painting came out fantastic. I can't wait to see your guys' version. Please send it into facebook.com slash official paint with Josh. And uh, until then, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And blah, blah.